And I ask you to look in the mirror and ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? To break down how they had to get women to see men as the enemy. And again, she went on to say, we'll use blacks because they're the weakest group, they're the poorest group, they're the most institutionalized group. At that time, just being 70 years or so out of slavery in the 1860s, she said, what we'll do is just like we had the old system of the women were brought into the house. You're getting the big secret of feminism right now. Just like the house slave was always a woman and the men were kept out in the barn and weren't allowed to read or write, we're going to set women up as the minders of society again. There's actually Roman handbooks on this from 2,000 years ago where they talk about, with white slaves at that time, mainly from Western Europe, you bring in the slaves, you kill a couple of the men in front of the women, you even kill some of the kids, and you tell the women, it's your job to keep these men in line or we're going to kill all of you. And they found that women, believing they were protecting people, would become incredible oppressors and tattletales over the men. And then within a few generations, they started enjoying the oppression and didn't even do it to, quote, protect the men. And I was reading about how they retranslated those Roman documents from Latin into French and then into English uh, by the 1820s or so uh, in the sugarcane plantations. I'm giving you history here. Heavy truth, folks. The sugarcane plantations of the Caribbean, they would bring a ship of slaves in. Already half of them on average from Africa would have died in the trip over because uh, they didn't really feed them from Africa. And they'd get them off the coffin ship, and then they would kill the most well-spoken, obvious leader, just from body language and things, of the blacks that was alive in front of the women. They'd beat their brains out, or they would hang them. And they'd tell the women, we're going to kill all your male children if you don't keep everybody in line. Is that understood? And they found the women would do whatever they were told. So that's where you get the mammy in all the Three Stooges movies and stuff, bossing the black guys around, and in all the old movies that are still, you know, representing what really happened in history, where, where the black woman is, is in charge, and she's got the big, you know, big mammy outfit on, Aunt Jemima, and she's in there telling those black men, you do what you're told. In fact, in this culture, it got so dominant that my father, when he would pick cotton, and he did pick cotton, uh, even though he came from a middle-class family, he was sent out to pick cotton, that he would go out and pick cotton on adjacent, uh, on adjacent farms and that they had groups of black people out there picking the cotton. And do you know who the bosses were? Giant, powerful black women. And they were even bossing the poor whites around. Now, that's what my dad grew up in East Texas. And my dad's only, what, 63 years old, okay? My dad grew up with a black woman foreman telling the poor whites what to do. Now that's a, that, 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 that is that culture, ladies and gentlemen. And I've read in the history diaries about breeding programs in this country where they would actually single out the most aggressive, largest black women. This goes back 200 years. You can look this up. This is the history you're not supposed to know to be the dominant people. So that's all Katy Perry and all this is. That's what feminism is. In fact, there's Margaret Sanger to the KKK. Show them that. That's powerful. In fact, we'll give people a full screen of that. I'm begging you. That's a real photo. To look into this now. When your wife comes home and dresses you down and tells you she's the boss, she's reading government propaganda developed in Rome 2,000 years ago to make women the slave masters. They call them the house slaves. They have an obnoxious term when it's blacks. The house, you know what's. And so let me expand on this, giving you the deep truth here. That's why in the 60s, blacks were demanding their liberty because they'd gone to war in World War II. They had their own communities, their own wealth. Illegitimacy was much lower than it is now. Crime rates much lower. And they said, Margaret Sanger and others, had developed the program. They said, what we'll do is we'll get them on welfare and we'll tell them, you can't have a man in the house who'll give you money. And we'll reinstitute re the house slave model. And that's what they've created now. And uh, 
black men are told, just like white men and everybody else, to be lethargic, don't work, be a gangster, just get women pregnant all day, that you're winning when you do that, when you don't take care of your kids. This is now being exported back where it came from with German and Gaulish slaves in Rome 2,000 years ago. Started out with whites. This was done to whites. And now it's being done to blacks, and now they've beta tested it on blacks, and they're rolling it out. So Margaret Sanger, Glorious Steidem, uh, the idiot K uh, Katy Perry doesn't know what she's doing. She's just paid by the Marines to do this, so does it. I mean, she obviously doesn't have, you know, two brain cells rubbed together. I mean, just look in her eyes. She's got one-way eyes. But when you look at the snake eyes of a Margaret Sanger or the devil eyes of a Glorious Steinem, they know how to run savage ops on our families. And they've devastated things. Uh, blacks were, depending on what area, 30% illegitimate, 40% illegitimate. When you are illegitimate, that means you're three to four times more likely to be in prison or involved in crime. Now blacks are 92% illegitimate. Uh, whites are 50% illegitimate now. Uh, Hispanics are about the same number as whites. And you can just see it, society totally falling apart, totally crumbling. And so I just want to right now say to Gloria Steinem and to the Ku Klux Klan, and to uh, uh, Margaret Sanger there with the Klan, who the liberals worship, I want to say you've done a great job. You have really screwed people up. And, of course, uh, they've also got the liberals, uh, who aren't really liberals, that are Klan members. Uh, they've got them doing a great job where blacks get all upset when the media you know, talks about Trayvon Martin and some questionable event and taking everybody at each other's throats. So, they, so the liberals can pose as their saviors while they're busy killing 52% of black folks before they're born. You can't get black folks excited about that because the media and Wolf Blitzer didn't say so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've gone deeply now into the uh, secrets uh, of what's going on with Katy Perry. Part of me, that disgusting, fetid, anti-human garbage. L let me explain something. Defeating the New World Order starts one place. When men and women understand that a man is not whole, and a woman is not whole. Humanity is a man and woman. Humanity is the interface of man and woman. And that's why the system attacks marriage and man and woman and makes it like some bigoted anti-civil rights thing when you say marriage is very important. Breeding between lions is important. Breeding between blue whales is important. Fire ant breeding is important. They're attacking through a scientific dictatorship the institution of humanity itself and packaging it as some civil rights crusade. Invade Africa to help the black people. Coney 2012, manifest fraud. Margaret Sanger and Katy Perry, women, let's get the men, let's join the Marines in some feminist exploit. Let's invade and take over the military. You'll show the men, you'll choke them out. This is only one phase right now, but they do want to make most of the peacekeepers women. A bunch of Elena Kagans with machine guns waddling around. I mean, it's a nightmare system, and people need to see it. Women, you've not been empowered by feminism. You've been turned into sexual objects who don't have any time to have any time off or to be appreciated for what you really are. You've been lied to about women's position in society throughout history. You are the society. You are... The, the, the creatures, the, uh, the more dominant of the two. You create and grow the next life. And they tell you, oh, that's a horrible thing. The feminists say your baby is a parasite. They don't ever want you to really have a child so you're empowered through it. And they want your child drinking a bunch of Coca-Cola and McDonald's, bouncing off the wall, screwed up, so that you don't understand what your child would have really been. They, they are attacking us so they can rewrite our society. Speaking of Margaret Sanger wanting to exterminate blacks and being worshipped in every liberal publication as a loving liberal, here are some numbers. You can go check these out for yourself. Approximate number of African-American deaths since 1973. AIDS, 292,000 here in the United States. Violent crimes, 306,000. Accidents, 370,000. Cancer, 1.6 mil. Heart disease, 2.2 mil. Abortion. 11,156,700, and then that number's a couple years old. That's through uh, 2001, so you know, I guess it's probably like more like 15, 16 million now if you follow the graphs we've got. And, and Margaret Sanger said, we got to kill these people. You can pull the quotes up. I just showed you her at the Klan rallies. 
And by the way, when I did Endgame, I didn't just, and we didn't even end up putting all that in there, but in the research, I had Aaron Dykes write off to the universities to get and to pay to have the actual microfilm photographed, and we showed it on air at the time, to show her actual letters, copies of them. Shing, we, how do we kill these black subhuman weeds? Those are quotes. We pose as liberals, we buy off the black leadership. And they worked out plans to have the black leadership always stir blacks and whites up against each other, pose as their friends. Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton on the MSNBC, you know, trendy channel. Again, real racists like Margaret Singer are like, I love you, black. Behind the scenes, murder him, murder him. And again, I come out and cover this, and I've seen uh, folks that saying they're black on my YouTube channel when I point out this Trayvon Martin thing is a media hoax. It, the whole event's a hoax. Whatever the truth is, it's a hoax to get us fighting with each other. And they're like, I knew you were a racist. Good then. Go ahead, okay? Go have a couple more abortions. Kill some black babies. I'm the bad guy. You're the people buying in to the New World Order's propaganda, and the women are the ones buying in to hating their men and thinking they're you know, getting at a leg up on somebody watching MTV they think's their friend. And men that think it's cool to act like idiots all day and act like fools because the TV shows tell them to. You're idiots too. It's time for everybody to get wise to this propaganda, and I'm sick of it. As for the Trayvon Martin situation, it has now come out that he's got a bunch of black friends for years who say that he's not racist and they come over and watch football and all the rest of the stuff and go to the gym and hang out. That's all on record. And now I saw it on the news this morning. A black neighbor, a black teenager is on ABC News going, no, the guy with the hoodie was on top, the other guy in the red shirt, the neighbor, beating him in the face. I mean, I've got all these clips. It's all right there. I'm not saying it's good that the guy even followed him. I get the fact that he was walking while black. That part's wrong. He's going to get the Skittles or whatever. And he's walking back, and the guy is an overzealous neighborhood watch guy, Zimmerman, who's called the 911 like 90-something times. I get all that. But he approaches him, and reportedly, Trayvon turned around and then you know, got an altercation with him. Not smart to bring fists to a gunfight. But the whole spectacle about the media and, and, and all of this is to get us at each other's throats. And, you know, it's coming out now that he had burglary tools at school and all this other stuff. I, I don't know. I know people that have been pulled over and cops have asked, what's that? And they go, it's a screwdriver. And they ask them if it's a burglary tool. I mean, I don't know if that's true. I was called in the high school office once and asked if I was robbing stereos. And I said, you know full well I have no criminal record. I said to the cop, I know you've been dealing drugs. That's why you're calling me in here. And he grabbed me and slammed my head into the table and said, yeah, you better shut up or you're going to go to prison, and then said a bunch of racist stuff about black people. So I get the fact that there's racism out there. He said, uh, black guys uh, are going to rape you and give you AIDS is actually what the white cop told me. But side issue. The point is, I know that that stuff's going on, okay? I'm not defending that. The point is, all getting together, and, 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 and now there's whites are being attacked, and all over the country, I read about public fairs and parks and events where black folks are now attacking white people. And, and, and now uh, there in Miami, uh, it looks like about 80, you know, mainly black kids, run in and grab and steal a bunch of stuff as part of a Trayvon Martin protest uh, at a uh, Walgreens. I mean, this is the type of stuff going on. My final point is this on this Trayvon Martin subject. Remember Jesse Jackson? Remember Al Sharpton and the lacrosse players? They were white, therefore the devil. Did they ever apologize when it turned out that was all made up? Now, I think this case is more complex. And Zimmerman may have been in the wrong. And if that's the case, he should be punished. I'm not debating that. It's that when mainstream media tells everybody to get at each other's throats, you got to ask why is that happening? And why is Obama trying to use this as his re-election campaign tool? It's disgusting. All right, that's what I have to say on that subject. Seventeen seventy six. <laughs>